Um, there's lots of spaces in the front. Um, you're very welcome to move up a little. Oh, sorry. Go to walk. <laughs> okay, so like we said, uh, we're going to be talking to you about the ways that we engage our parents in our libraries. I am Josie and Fitzgerald. I've been at Cairo American College for over five years. And again, my name is Amy Copeland, and I was at Cairo American College as a high school, middle high school librarian for five years, and I'm in my second year as a high school librarian and science. My family is my first. Okay. So um, when we uh, wanted to make sure that everybody understood that the libraries were for the parents and for the students and for the alumni and for everybody, we kind of, I don't know, we read this somewhere and we made up, I don't remember, but Josie and I came up with, we shared the library with everyone who worked at the school or our school. And we often had to uh, reinforce facts to make sure that everybody felt as if they were, they were comfortable. So here's um, how it began. I moved to Cairo um, a month after the Second Revolution with a 12-year-old and a 14-year-old. And my 14-year-old daughter is tall and thin and blonde. And um, it was a little scary. There were fights in the airport when we landed. And our kids said to us, why are those people fighting? And we thought, we don't know. We can't tell you. We don't know what they're saying. And um, is the place going to blow up? We just knew nothing. We only knew that if we didn't go and touch down in Cairo, we would not get our um, severance pay if they had to evacuate. So we were going to fly, we were going to touch down, and if it got bad, we were getting out because we would each get three months salary, which would give us enough to figure out our next steps. So we got there, and I realized that I had no mom friends. I was a librarian, two budding teenagers, and no mom friends. And my mom friends had gotten me through those first few years in terms of you know, when your friends become friends with a kid you don't know, and then you call your friend, and you're like, your kid went to school with that kid, what do you know? I had no connections to anybody, and you don't, you know, as you know, you don't know who to trust. So I decided I had to get to know some of these parents, and I work full time, so the best way to do this is to do it via the library. So that, that was kind of the kernel of how I came up with the idea of pulling more parents into the library intentionally. They were coming anyway sometimes to check out books or sit around and enjoy the air conditioning, but this is why it was an intentional activity. So going on with that intention, we decided that we wanted to offer content that would, might be beyond the, the usual library orientation, that here's the books and this is the library catalog. Um, and as time went on, at least I realized that having parents in the library and having them use our services really did create allies for us in uh, the literacy, in um, the school in general, in so many different ways. We know teachers, I mean, we know parents now, and the parents pass on the message to the rest of the community. And so um, that's an important thing for us. At CAC, we've been in the same uh, location for 70 years. And uh, especially before the revolution, uh, the addition of revolution in 2011, it was very much a community center. And our library really felt like a public library in the US. And so we wanted to continue offering that, uh, both because to continue the tradition, but also to get new people coming. So we realized that, the, again, the best way to do it is to, um, I guess, sorry, it's the next slide. The best way to do that was to engage parents where they wanted to be engaged. You know, not just take them with you to read more of your children or all those things that occurred other ways. It was more, what can we do for you as an adult, especially if you just moved there, because we had the embassy crowd coming in every two years. If you just moved there, what could we do to service you? So that was our first approach. How did we approach them as, as adults? So um, we did do the library catalog. Um, and we subscribed to Overdrive, so we did an Overdrive session for them, and we helped them connect to our library for Overdrive. But we also then would say, you know, please bring your American or home country library card, and then we would also connect them to their home library via Overdrive. And a lot of them didn't realize that they still had access to their home libraries, so that was thrilling. 
for them. Um, and a New York Times digital um, subscription. So again, that was taking care of them. It wasn't necessarily a student thing, but it was helping the adults. And they were really um, thankful for that. And then we did exit slips uh, for feedback on what we'd done, but we also proposed some other ideas. Would you be interested in book groups? Would you be interested in, I don't remember what else was on there. Oh yes, uh, yeah. Screen time, like you want us to help, you know, do lessons on digital uh, managing um, digital devices in your home, because my experience had led me to believe that sixth grade parents were completely lost. Our our uh, K five was pretty highly regulated about how long they could be on campus and what they could do, and then all bets were off in grade six. They could stay on campus if campus was open. It was open from five a.m. to ten p.m. and kids could be there that entire time. Um, and they wanted to stay, and they told their mom they had to stay and do homework. Um, and they were really just using great Wi-Fi. So, um, so uh, we we did. We started off saying to parents, "Can we help you with that?" So we broke this down into a couple different divisions, and the first one is this. So this is something that's happening in Saigon South. Yesterday, it was our middle school librarian who can't be here today, um, but she was doing. Um, I uh, think on literacy and the library and parents and kind of more traditional about how they can help their students with literacy. Um, we have found often in conferences that the parents say, well, my child doesn't read. And we're just at the point where we're like, well, do you? <laughs> and sometimes they don't because the parents can't read books in English at the same level as the student. Um, so it was kind of a, we need to explain to parents the importance of modeling in whatever way you're going to read, but sometimes if if you've been educated or your first language is different than what your students are learning in, some of you can't assume that parents know that modeling reading is a good idea. And so she was doing a session kind of on, on the importance of literacy research back presentation. And so to encourage uh, parents to read, we had different types of book clubs. Um, one of this is you know, like a regular fiction book club. You pick a book, everybody reads it together, everybody talks about it afterward, like, you know, in a month we have happy tea, sometimes refreshments. Um, I did this at IST, uh, International School of Tianjin, for about four or five years, and it really was a highlight of my month, having all those parents coming in and talking about books in general. It was super fun. Um, IST uh, is a little different from CAC in that it's way out in the suburbs and it's not a centralized location like CAC, so there really wasn't anything else to do <laughs> except come to book club. But at CAC, uh, in Cairo, there's so much more to do, so we're competing with a lot of other things. So our book, I mean, our book clubs have to be, you know, um, interesting, engaging. Um, and I ran a cookbook book club for a couple years, and that was a really awesome thing to do. It, again, it was like I was trying to meet parents, and uh, sharing food is a uh, major aspect of, of uh, Egyptian culture. Um, you pass, when you when I rode my bike to school, every single guard on the street who was eating his breakfast would offer me food. I mean, you just did not allow a person to pass you without offering you food. It's just part of the culture. So I read somewhere on something like, oh, there's a, there's a club you can do where you pick a cookbook, and you advertise it, and everybody picks a recipe, and then a month later they make that recipe, and they come in, and you talk about it. So I would pick a cookbook, <laughs> and then I would, uh, you know, we had our original planning meeting, and then I would pick a cookbook, and everybody would go through and pick a recipe they thought they could handle, and they would photocopy it and go home, and a month later we would meet and we would eat. And that was the highlight of my month because I didn't have to think about lunch. Um, and it was really, it was a great cultural conversation um, because we had people from all over. And of course, we spent a lot of time talking about what you substituted and you couldn't get this and you couldn't get that and how you adjust to the recipe. And, um, but that, for that culture, uh, being able to tie literacy and food was a very, very natural thing. And it worked really, really well. Um, and you got to eat. So um, we thought it. It's, uh, in Cairo, at least, we have uh, several parents who are authors, um, and we invited them to come and talk to us uh, and the parents. Some of them were, I guess, all, no, two of them were like local, it, it was an Egyptian setting, their book. Um, one of them was a young adult fantasy novel, and we threw her a launch party. 
and all those also were well attended because of the Egyptian connection. You don't always get the Egyptian parents to come. I mean, they do come a little bit, not as much as the uh, Western parents, because the Egyptian parents have a life outside of school. Uh, but having the Egyptian local authors was great to bring um, those parents in, and then they could, we could push uh, more programming that we have for parents or invite more feedback from them. Did I tell you we've got the photographer? She's making a book. Yes. Yeah, so um, that was all, that was great because we for a short time we felt like we were a bookstore and we did a you know author meeting and lunch and that was those were really they felt really honored because if they were away from their home country, their neighborhood bookstore would have done that for them. But since they were with the embassy and they were traveling, they, they didn't know they didn't have that opportunity. So we provided it for them and it was it just was good all the way around. So we also do used book sales at both of our schools. We do them in a couple of different ways. We, you know, used and donated books. We often ask for donated books at the end of the year when people might be moving. Um, and uh, at, I guess we'll start with um, at CSC. We did, we did it once a year in the spring, um, and it was a huge event. And what was fascinating to me when I was doing that was that the assistants, the 